Now, Mr. Webster Wayne. Please, sir. One day. One day. Yeah. I only have one slide, so okay. I just. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, it's uh, wonderful to be here. I think um, that um, a lot has been said already by colleagues who have uh, spoken before, but um, perhaps what's important is uh, just a bit of uh, context in the sense that uh, when, we look of, uh, when we think of adaptation in the sense of um, NDCs, in the beginning of uh, discussion, discussing NDCs, um, adaptation was not considered to be one of um, the areas that would be included within, um, within NDCs. So it's, um, it is quite um, impressive and uh, encouraging that um, out of the NDCs that have been um, submitted so far, a number of countries have um, included uh, adaptation aspects within, um, within their NTCs. But what it means also is that um, unlike uh, mitigation, with, N with uh, adaptation we are almost um, acting as if we are starting afresh. We, don't have, um, we haven't yet the same level of time to develop methodologies in terms of um, how to assess um, the effectiveness of um, adaptation actions. And in that um, regard, what it means is that uh, for most countries, additional capacity will need to be built in the range of um, areas to support um, NDC implementation. And uh, in this context, um, this capacity from our experiences as a uh, city can, um, this uh, means having financial and human resources uh, capacity that is needed to, first of all, uh, think through the development of uh, proposals uh, that are adaptation focused. And um, together have uh, the skills and uh, the knowledge to be able to apply and uh, the tools also to implement uh, these, um, these initiatives. From this perspective, what uh, we have uh, seen within um, adaptation is that um, capacity uh, refers to a number of uh, different aspects. The first one um, relates uh, to institutional capacity, which is uh, predominantly for governance and coordination aspects. This question has been uh, raised by a number of uh, colleagues who have uh, spoken uh, before that uh, coordination and uh, governance aspects are critical. And um, in this respect, uh, this is also something that can be viewed um, in um, respect of uh, being different uh, from um, individual capacity within, uh, within institutions. The second aspect is uh, the one of our technical capacity to carry out um, modeling and uh, evaluation. I think we have had uh, a number of uh, interventions on monitoring and evaluation. And uh, finally, the third aspect um, relates to relational capacity to build partnerships and uh, invest uh, time in uh, processes. In terms of uh, the work that we have uh, been doing as uh, CDKN, um, having reflected on these aspects, we have seen that um, capacity building in the sense of uh, the way that we have been working is not just uh, capacity building, but we are talking of capability building. In um, capability building, what we mean is that um, we is not only developing the technical skills that are needed, but you are also considering um, the environment within that capacity building happens. In most cases, uh, the capacity building is um, uh, done as if it's um, an um, isolated uh, event. In this case, uh, we can look at um, aspects such as uh, training courses that um, are developed uh, predominantly to address certain aspects of, uh, of uh, climate change. But what actually is needed, um, processes uh, that enhance or transform the ability of individuals, organizations and institutions and societies to be able to articulate and achieve um, a set of goals. And uh, this set of goals um, relate A, to dealing with uh, the aspects of climate change. And uh, secondly, they also relate to dealing with uh, aspects of poverty, poverty alleviation, um, economic uh, prosperity. And uh, with capability um, development, of course, um, the expectation is that um, the processes become uh, increasingly endogenous over time. Uh, it's something that almost is inbuilt within uh, systems and uh, within institutions. This is one aspect of our capacity building that um, we, have, um, we have seen within our work. The example that I would like to give is one example from um, our work in um, in Ethiopia in 2015 when we started working there, the Minister of Environment um, indicated that um, it was useful to come with um, consultants who would um, support the ministry with uh, the work that they wanted to do. But uh, that the vision for the government was that um, after two to three years, the number of um, 
individuals and institutions within the country who are able to do this work, whether those uh, individuals are within government or they are outside government, it didn't really matter, but uh, the government, uh, they, had, they had a vision of um, having people who would uh, be able to undertake this work. And uh, part of the main interest uh, for the government of Ethiopia was that um, in, um, in uh, terms of uh, developing the local capacity, we are also able to retain uh, knowledge management systems that are more effective and that are, more, that are owned locally. And this was um, an important aspect of um, understanding um, how capability development uh, worked, um, having the support of government in developing the skills that are needed within the country to be able to develop proposals to implement uh, projects and um, also to monitor and evaluation, evaluate those, um, those projects. The second aspect uh, that um, I would like to look at um, is the one of uh, developing capacity within university curricula and um, also research programs. It is quite clear that um, capacity within governments and uh, within certain institutions cannot be adequate without having the necessary um, technical skills that are gained within um, the early university years of uh, development. And at CDKN, we have a program uh, in Southern Africa where we work with universities to develop a curricula on climate change uh, that, will, uh, that is aimed for master students and PhD students. And um, we also have um, a program, the Future Climate for Africa, which is working with uh, different research consortia in different parts of the continent. And uh, this particular program is uh, aimed at supporting um, governments and part in particular decision makers with uh, their medium term to long term planning in the context of climate change. So in, uh, in this question, it's um, how does someone within a Ministry of Planning, for instance, uh, take into consideration the impact of climate change within 30 to 40 years and um, use uh, that knowledge uh, to plan for the future. And uh, finally, the one uh, aspect is that uh, capacity development, uh, strengthening and mobilization in the sense that um, in most cases that we work, um, there is um, some lacking capacity, but uh, there is also always uh, some capacity that exists. And uh, part of what we need to be dealing with is um, how do we mobilize that capacity and how do we further strengthen the, that capacity to be able to deliver on the aspects of um, the work that we are looking at. So those are the three aspects uh, that I would like to discuss and we can uh, discuss further some of the points here in the groups. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wande, and the wonderful three uh, interventions uh, from the experts. Uh, also, they're talking on the respective sub-themes. And since the time is quite limited, uh, normally uh, we, we thought, I mean, that we should like, uh, go to the uh, Q&A session directly. But before doing that, since uh, they spend their time